What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we are back with another singles narrated Wi-Fi battle. Now in particular, these next couple of battles I upload will be from the Lithio Battle Association tryouts. Uh, I've already kind of informed you guys on Twitter how I did with that. But let's take a look at these tryouts for sake of not only seeing the competition, but I've actually put together some teams for these tryouts. Uh, for trials, you were only allowed to use two OU Pokemon in a team. So that put in a little bit of an interesting spin on it. I kind of ran with two teams throughout the whole tryouts also. Um, and I didn't want to use too many things that I had used before. That was kind of my ideal in going into this. So in this first team that I'm using, I have Mamoswine with uh, Nevermelt Ice alongside a Scarf Rotom, Mega Blastoise, which I'm actually running a Water Pulse on instead of Skull for once. I'm just gonna start out with Mamoswine instead of Stealth Rocks here because it didn't look like he had anything on his team that could really get rid of entry hazards. Uh, he could maybe stop them from being set up with a couple of fast taunters like Alakazam, but outside of that, nothing he really wanted. Um, he didn't have anything to default really either, uh, but that's okay. I get a crit on the first Icicle Crash against Weezing. I think he overpredicted, expecting me to switch out. Um, the man, the Mamoswine being burned is not something that I really want to be burned. But I also didn't want to risk switching into Talonflame because Weezing can carry Thunderbolt as a coverage move. Uh, so I'd rather Mamoswine be burned. And I actually was going to let it be KO'd right at the beginning of the match. But then I realized that his Alakazam might be Focus Sash. So I'm actually going to hold on to Mamoswine just in case I needed to break a Sash on Alakazam later on. Uh, Flamethrower is not going to do any noticeable damage to Blastoise. And this gives me a free chance to Mega Evolve. Shoutouts to my friend Box, of course. I sent him a Mega Blastoise figurine for his birthday, and that's who this Blastoise is named after. Uh, I just went for Dark Pulse here on the off chance that he wanted to switch out. The water move was pretty obvious, and he is carrying a Venusaur, which is probably a Mega Venusaur. Um, so if he wanted to switch out to that, it would not particularly enjoy taking uh, a Mega Launcher boosted Dark Pulse. But since he is bringing out Venusaur now, I'm assuming he's gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve and maybe go for Leech Seed or Sleep Powder. And Skarmory doesn't really care about either of those. He actually goes for Sludge Bomb, probably just trying to get some good damage on there. And Steel Guard is actually especially defensive Skarmory, so I take Hidden Power Fire very well after my leftover is that's at 5 or 6 hit KO. And as I said earlier, his team is actually kind of fat, except for Alakazam. And he doesn't have anything for Entry Hazard, so we're just going to get up some of those. Uh, he sees how little his attack is doing, and he actually switches up to go for Leech Seed instead which I'm fine with, I can just roost that damage away. I wanted to get up all three layers of spikes here, but uh, I also didn't want to lose too much HP on Skarmory because once I get down to the range that I'm in now, then I'm in the, the range where I can easily be revenge killed by something. Um, so that's why I went ahead and went for roost on that turn instead of going for more spikes, even though I knew I probably could have lived another hidden power fire elite C combination. No chance, no, no sense in and risking that chance there. He could also get a critical hit, which would be annoying, but I'm just really proud of how well Steel Guard is taking these special hits. Um, I did expect him to switch out right there, so I went for Whirlwind. Forcing in Alakazam, I really, really should have taken this opportunity to go for Iron Head. I actually, uh, I thought he was gonna switch again because I didn't think he would have Hidden Power Fire on Alakazam and on his Venusaur, but he actually does, so I just went for Roost expecting him to switch out, but he hits me with the move so that was a little bit annoying although I, it does let me see how much damage his move would do to steel guard which is good knowledge to have uh, and also since it did so little damage I know for sure he's he's sash because otherwise he would have knocked me out if you were life orbed um, but yeah Pangoro is gonna come in here it's assault vested it's going to take basically not any noticeable damage from the hidden power fire but then it gets obliterated by dazzling gleam and that is why later on in the battles you'll see me switching to Assault Vested Hydreigon instead of Pangoro because Assault Vested Hydreigon can take a Dazzling Gleam from an Alakazam, whereas Pangoro cannot. So the KO on Pangoro allows me to bring in my Scarf Rotom Cut Form for free, or Mo Form, excuse me, Rotom Mo. Uh, and that means I'm going to be able to Volt Switch out as he brings in Venusaur. I think he was expecting me to just U-turn because he leaves in his Mega Venusaur, and even if he had switched out, I don't mind putting Brave Bird damage on something. Um, at this point, my, my priorities for winning are keeping Talonflame he healthy and whittling things down so that they can be taken out by Brave Birds at this point. Uh, Psyshock does a lot more damage to Mega Blastoise than I expected, 
and then he also has energy ball which would not have KO'd me but he gets a critical hit so that's unfortunate I've, I've missed out on two opportunities to break the sash on this thing one was my fault and the other one was the game kind of just flipping me the bird uh, flipping me the talon flame flipping me the, the Jesus bird I don't know uh, that that crit was unfortunate but I know he's probably gonna switch out once again the entry hazards are going to be fantastic for Umbreon just because even though it's trying to pass around wishes to his teammates he's going to be taking a lot of damage just switching around so much he has nothing to get rid of those entry hazards it's just so nice just really really nice I'm gonna put up another layer of spikes kind of expecting him to use wish which he does go for and I knew he could just wish and go into Darmanitan but I figured that was way too obvious and there was no way he would do it because I could just whirlwind him and he wouldn't be able to pick what actually received the wish so I thought that was a good time to not whirlwind and, but he actually just goes straight into Darmanitan which I did not expect him to do because between the spikes and the stealth rock damage he basically takes 49% and I use that as an opportunity to roost up that's not too bad just because I'm back up to full HP which means that my sturdy will not be into effect but that means that I have to take Flare Blitz, I risk the burn chance, and now I'm not going to be able to Roost uh, to kind of keep Alakazam in check. And that sucks because now that I finally do Whirlwind, guess who I Whirlwind him out to? Right into Alakazam, which was the last Pokemon that I wanted to see. I would have preferred seeing Umbreon at that point, honestly. But uh, I, I wanted to at least keep him honest. I wanted to force him to go for that Hidden Power Fire, because I definitely went for Iron Head that turn. And now I know Okay, I just need to break the sash on Alakazam, and after that, my Talonflame can just clean up the rest of this battle, because Sharp Beak boosted attacks, he's coming in, taking so much entry hazard damage, I just need to break Alakazam's sash, that's the main thing. The bad thing is, is I only have a few Pokemon left to switch between. Uh, now, if I could take out this Umbreon here, that would be a good place to start, as Umbreon is generally annoying. It would also be good just to put some damage onto Darmanitan. Uh, I think I could also take Darmanitan out after a Brave Bird, after it takes all that uh, entry hazard damage as well. So Umbreon is down, which is good because now I've dismantled the HP recovery part of his team. He can no longer recover his HP with Wishes. I can't go straight for Brave Bird here. I have to switch out into Rotom. And he goes for Psy Shock. I knew I could take one, and I was just hoping for a crit, and I take it pretty well. But unfortunately, it is a 2 at KO, so now I have to play much more carefully. He switches on to me and Shao. I just went straight for Volt Switch, uh, because I didn't want to stay in there and take another hit, basically. Also, even though he has me and Shao in here, I can just go out into Talonflame again. Even if it has the focus, uh, even if it has the flinching type attack for me, it's not going to KO me. And he actually doesn't go for that. He does not go for Fake Out at all, because he's abandoned me and Shao. So he doesn't really have an opportunity to do that. And with the entry hazard, he can't switch out and switch back in. So one more time, if you think back to the beginning of the match, wow, there was, sounds like someone just died in a car somewhere. Uh, if you think back to the beginning of the match, you will remember that I say Mamoswide just in case I needed to break the sash on Alakazam. And that situation comes into play right now because I'm able to use Mamoswide as a sacrifice to bring in Rotom safely, break the sash with a Thunderbolt because I'm Scarfed, Rotom goes down, now I can go into Talonflame and hit it with a Brave Bird. Now he does switch it out into Darmanitan, but after all the entry hazard damage, I'm not going to do enough recoil damage to myself to where I'm at risk at, of KOing myself. Uh, that's why I don't like running Life Orb on Talonflame, I just, you end up using Brave Bird 90% of the time. I don't see the point in using Life Orb with such heavy recoil damage. But now that we're finally back down to Alakazam, I'm going to be able to finish him off with a Brave Bird, and that was a very close 1-0 victory. So that was my first round in the LBA tryouts, and I know after this round that I needed to switch out Pangoro. So stay tuned for some more LBA tryout matches, and uh, also stay tuned for my team draft analysis video. Have a good day, guys.